Okay, today we're going to cover the final topic, believe it or not, in our unit on induction. And believe it or not, this is the final unit that would be tested for a normal AP physics year. So remember the goal is we're trying to get this electron to move using a magnetic field. We had this convoluted system where we were pushing a bar across some rails in a magnetic field and we generated a current. We saw the formula to figure out that uh, voltage, which would then allow us to find the current. Remember, this is electromotive force and it really means voltage. We talked about the idea of flux measured in Weber's that had to do with the strength of the field, the area and the orientation of the coil. We related it to a solar panel and we saw that we could change the flux by doing things like making the solar panel bigger changing the strength of the sunlight or by rotating the solar panel. In this case, we were making the magnetic flux smaller. Okay, but we could change the flux by changing the area, changing the strength of the field, or by changing the angle. We related this to the lab that we did earlier in this week. And we talked about how the magic thing was anytime the flux changes, we get the light bulb coming on. I then had you guys do this really important one, which is a coil spinning in a magnetic field. And this is the heart of any kind of generator or alternator. So you guys had this thing spin around in the field and you looked at the uh, voltage that was generated as it spun. Notice it's like the solar panel. Here there's no flux. Here there's a lot of flux. Here again there's no flux. And if you notice up top, the flux goes from positive numbers, and then when the coil is upside down, the flux is negative numbers. So the flux is constantly changing. When we look at a graph generated by this generator, we get alternating current. We learned this last year. This is every generator in the United States would produce alternating current with this um, pattern. And then yesterday we saw the relationship between the amount of flux and the voltage that we generate. And you guys could see that they are both sine patterns, but one is actually a cosine curve. It's a sine curve that has been shifted. And the other one is a traditional sine curve. When we try to match things up, this is our starting position. This is where we are right here. We are at maximum positive flux. And the weird thing is when the flux is maximum, we're getting no voltage. Okay, for, so for some reason, even though we have the highest possible amount of flux, there is absolutely no voltage. When we go forward, we notice here there is no flux. And if we follow along our graph, no flux would occur right here when our flux line hits zero. And we'll see that at that moment, we have maximum voltage. So it seems really bizarre. When there's no flux, we have max voltage. And then when we're back to maximum flux again, but this time upside down, we're once again at zero voltage. So it seems very contradictory, but when our flux is zero, our voltage is most extreme. In this case, it's most extreme negative. So what gives? It turns out that voltage does not depend on the flux. 
but on how quickly the flux changes. So if we go back to what we were looking at earlier, what you want to do is not look at the position of the flux, but look at the slope of the line for the flux. Sorry about that. You want to look at the slope of the line for the flux. And here, the flux graph has a horizontal slope. Here, the flux graph has a horizontal slope. Anytime it has a horizontal slope, it means the flux is momentarily stationary, momentarily not changing, and at those moments, the voltage is zero. Then if we jump further along, at this spot where our flux is zero, the slope here happens to be maximum, the maximum steepness, but you'll notice it's a negative slope. But a negative slope gives us a positive voltage. And when we jump ahead, here once again, we have a minimum flux, we're right here, but now we've got again our steepest slope. So this time our slope is positive and our voltage is negative. So two important ideas from today. The voltage depends not on the flux, but on the change in flux. That is how quickly the flux is changing, the uh, change in flux over time, and that the voltage has the opposite sign of the slope. So when the slope is positive, the voltage is negative. When the slope is negative, the voltage is positive. So it comes out that this is our final equation. It says the voltage that we generate in a generator is the rate at which the flux changes, the change in flux per second. We throw a negative sign in here so that when the flux is increasing, we get a negative voltage, and when the flux is decreasing, we get a positive voltage. This idea that the flux has the opposite sign, I'm sorry, that the voltage has the opposite sign of the slope is what is known as, oops, sorry about that, is what is known as Lenz's Law. Sorry about that. And that is, unfortunately not writing, it's L-E-N-Z, Lenz's Law. And again, I just want to leave you guys with a couple of pictures of things we have done recently in school. Okay, so this is our Lens Lab. Anyway, guys, this is pretty much the last major idea in induction. And I hope you guys all have a great weekend.